Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We've just had an AMA and Ask Me Anything with the Vehicle Experience team from Cloud Imperium. They answered a huge range of Star Citizen questions from ship balance to combat to plans for future mechanics. So let's go through those questions and answers and see what was said. Will multi-crew ships operated by a certain amount of players ever be able to be balanced? properly because um, multi-crew feels like it's an underdog in every scenario. There is no simple answer to that. It depends on the chosen ship and what they are meant to do. A second crew seat should not automatically mean twice the combat performance, but we obviously want a crew seat to matter and make a difference. That part of the game is obviously not fully developed yet, but we're slowly steering towards it. The first steps happened with the turrets, which are not under pilot control, and more steps will be taken in the future. So crew seats will be a force multiplier, though not necessarily by a factor of two. Is there any intention to reduce the speed ceiling or force combat into SCM or slower speeds for dogfighting? We don't plan to actively force players into a certain speed range, but we do want the speeds at which players engage in combat to be much lower, but how we achieve this organically is still under evaluation as it requires lots of moving parts to come together to achieve. Will G mechanics make return, as of now they are non-existent. Yes, we definitely want proper G-force exhaustion effects back. We're focusing on capacitor gameplay first though. Are there plans anytime soon to increase specialization slash focus of ships and their intended roles? Yes, a lot of our work this year will entail to change the tunings and abilities of the ships to fit their intended roles and purposes. The rough plans are already laid out during the combat summit, but doing the actual work will take some time to complete. Why are these afterburner overheating ceilings so drastically different between fighters, most being way too short? That is based on the dynamics between the amount of thrusters and how much cooling and the power they require, which in turn informs the heat buildup. For capacitor gameplay, pretty much all items and ships will have to be taken under scrutiny. A large part of our design work resolves around predicting dynamic effects and finding potential balancing problems before they end up in the game. We're really trying to improve in that regard, but there is still quite some complexity to manage. Any info on the landing camera yet and if it can show the terrain underneath it while landing? We've definitely talked about the need for landing cameras, and while it's not on our short-term schedule, this week's Inside Star and on docking shows off something quite similar for some ships. The current experience we see when it comes to combat is triangles, names, and lots of icons everywhere on the screen. Has there been any discussion on streamlining the information the pilot gets for targets, friendlies, and during combat to clear the clutter? There are definitely plans to be able to filter different kinds of radar contacts at different times, e.g. choosing only to see friendlies, turrets, mineables, etc., although this falls into another team's hands rather than the VET team or the vehicle experience team. Will capacitors replace or eliminate thruster overheating? Capacitor gameplay will be used to drive short-term consequences of using your ship systems while heat will be moved to longer term. So, without speaking out guarantees about balance numbers, the idea is that in a single minute of dogfight, heat won't matter that much. If you keep fighting for 10 minutes or longer though, heat will become an issue that needs to be managed. Can you tell us anything about new features that you've been working on that are planned for later this year? Like, what are you most excited about? I'm most excited about capacitor gameplay, how players will manage the energy available and how it changes the combat dynamics, but also how the balance will change because of it as thrusters, shields and weapons will all have to adapt and be rebalanced to deliver the short and long term dynamics we want. What's the difference between capacitors and the power triangle we currently have? Will capacitors be a different system or an evolution of the existing one? Capacitors will be a separate system and we're reviewing how existing features such as the power triangles could possibly change to give us the gameplay that we want while not stepping on the toes of other systems as each feature has to fit nicely into the overall ship experience. Ship combat. 
many backers feel, is in a weird place right now with the apex predators of the verse being the Talon and Vanguard. Do you feel that future systems, armor, physicalized damage, etc., will allow ship combat to organically shift into the non-meta style you're looking for, or is there more that has to be done with the ships themselves to achieve that? That is our goal. These systems should push the combat more organically into an area we're more happy with, but it isn't just armor and damage, it's performance of the ships, the weapon balance, and how multi-crew gameplay changes the dynamics. The Arrow and Talon have better rates of acceleration and higher vertical thrust, which allows them to be more efficient in dogfights. Are you going to update the other light and medium fighters in this direction or decrease the abilities of these two fighters? These are two of the highest performing ships and where these ships go moving forward depends on the results of multiple changes that we have planned to how combat's gonna work and what speeds we want to get these at for that combat. As far as overall balance goes though, we do plan to move specific fighters like these closer together in terms of performance. Light and door panels for all the ships. Yes, that's planned and all new ships are having this built in during production and we'll be retroactively adding it to existing ones as we go back and do other fixes. So door and light panels like the Mercury Star Runner. Any idea on how to combat Pipwiggle? Yes, we are aware of these problems and it's actually caused by several issues coming together. We tried out a couple of things already, but working with prediction is not the easiest topic in game development. So at the moment, we're not yet confident that we found a good solution yet, but it's a high priority issue due to its impact on the game. With the new missile operator mode coming up, which we should actually refer to as MOM, M-O-M, what is the overall feel that you want from larger torpedoes, size 9 and above? Do you want it to be more strategic weapons sort of fired from afar with more planning or, or more tactical dogfighting type um, that smaller missiles lean towards? Our goal with missile operator mode is that firing missiles or torpedoes becomes much more of a bigger event. It's a specific choice you're making at that time to engage. It brings together a lot of dynamics we've been working on, so from a long distance you open yourself up to a lot more risk from all the defense systems. The missile can be deflected with countermeasures, intercepted by other ships, or even destroyed by turrets. But we also want the risky gameplay of fighting to get your ship closer to your target to increase the chances of having a successful hit. And if you're good enough to hit your target without a lock, you'll feel the achievement of doing so. Are there any plans to roll back gimbal assist or is it settled for good? The amount of gimbal assist and all other aiming helpers we're using is heavily dependent of the combat speeds, network performance, pip stability and other factors. As these factors change, we will reevaluate if we need to increase or decrease the effects. So no, it's not set in stone. Why is ship tuning and balancing not a higher priority task within Cloud Imperium? It is a high priority task, but we're dealing with a lot of ships and items. There are also a lot of moving parts and interacting elements with ships, e.g. thrusters, power consumptions, heat buildup, etc. So changing one thing might feel good, but could have a lot of unforeseen consequences. It's incredibly complex and going through everything just takes time, but we're getting there step by step. Will the Nova Tonk control just like another ground vehicle, or will it have an independent track movement like a real tank? It will have independent track movement and behave like a real world tank. Is a more realistic friction simulation planned for ground vehicles? Yes, we're planning a complete overhaul of ground vehicles that will bring more realistic physics and behavior. Is it planned to give the spaceships a more realistic behavior in atmosphere in the near future? Yes, our goal is to make light fighters at least behave more like modern jet fighters as we move the movement from maneuvering thrusters to control services, allowing our ships to perform more extreme behaviors in atmosphere than is currently possible with just thrusters alone. After the PvP of Xenothreat, will you consider evaluating comparative fighter stats to identify underperforming or overperforming ships with a view to tune balance. We are constantly evaluating the ships and events like Xenothreat 
and these are a great way of allowing us to further understand the balance we have in game but it's not just about the balance for Xenothreat it's the overall PU as well. What's the story with component sub targeting and disabling ships? Right now you can sub target engines and some turrets but it's not particularly a deep mechanic. We do plan to add more deep mechanics to sub targeting that allow you to target specific components that go beyond just the engines and turrets. Space combat is mostly face-to-face -face shooting, which better resembles a shooter game than a dogfighting game. Has the team given serious consideration to the aspects of the ship flight models that generate this result, i.e. the ratio of linear acceleration to rotation rates? We are invested heavily in achieving a good combat geometry, so the way how ships can move around each other. We're approaching that both mathematically and from an experience point of view. Ultimately, we do not want the FM flight model to feel like it's on rails or like you're controlling a camera, but we still want to give you a proper six degrees of freedom experience. Developing the capacitor systems is actually based on that demand. They will allow us to add more variation into dogfighting to create a meaningful and fun experience. Unfortunately, they were not able to drop any details on bombs or mines yet. Uh, I suspect that will be uh, talked about in the future. But that was it from this Vehicle Experience Team AMA. I'm interested to know what you think on those topics. Anything that really hit the mark, anything that didn't, any questions you wish they uh, had answered. I will link the original um, Q and A, the, the AMA there as well, so you can see all the questions that were asked in full detail. I love Cloud Imperium doing these AMAs. I love the community interaction. I love devs just coming out and talking about uh, their experiences with particular features and what they're working on and answering the community questions. So uh, big up to Cloud Imperium for doing this and I hope they do many, 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 many more and much more frequently. But whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway and February is no different. This month is for a Mercury Star Runner. It's a multi-role ship, but also a solid data and cargo runner and flyable now in game. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during a month. Details below. I'm also a massive shill for NordVPN. If you are looking for a VPN service, and you should, then NordVPN acts as a fleet of ships protecting your data from prying eyes while also providing privacy like a ship would enjoy the interwebs without borders securely and safely use the links below for discount i can't promise it will make your life better but i can imply that also there is game glass do you have a touchscreen device that you want to use as a diegetic controller or interactive panel for star citizen and other games check out game glass it's free for life for the basic version and you can buy additional shards or functionality and or subscribe for more as well a special thank you for everyone that goes the extra mile to become a channel member or Patreon, as well as just liking, subscribing, or sharing these videos. If you would like to further support the channel, then please consider using the YouTube join button below my videos and becoming a board gamer channel member. You'll get some exclusive content each month, as well as badges that appear in the comments section of videos and emotes that you can use and all that sort of jazz. Thank you so much for checking out my content. You take care, and I hope to see you in the verse.